Hey, do you have a waist trainer and you've always wondered, hey, how is this training my waist? How does this really work? Well, you're gonna wanna watch this video. I've got props, 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 and a live prop too with Gabby helping us out, trying to explain to you how waist trainers work. Spoiler alert, they don't. Maximal projection. We want this line to be smooth. Not everyone lipos in the key area. Hi, it's Dr. William. Welcome to another season of Behind the Mask. I can't believe it's already season four. And to kick off season four, I've asked Gabby Allen to be here. She's our host of our BTM, the podcast. And she's gonna stick around for a little bit for some demonstration purposes. But tonight, I want to talk about waist trainers and what they really do and how they work and how they don't work. But I want to start off here, pen and paper, old school, and kind of go over what happens when you wear a waist trainer, okay? So there's a chest cavity, which has your heart and lungs in it. The lungs are really squishy. So the lungs will get huge, they expand just like a balloon, and then they can completely deflate. So when you inhale, when you bring breath in, your lungs are getting bigger. When you exhale and you breathe the air out, your lungs are getting smaller. What causes your lungs to get bigger and smaller with your breath is movement of the diaphragm. So the diaphragm is this here. It's a very thin muscle, it's, it's a sheet, it's like a tent, and it's, it's very tight. And that moves up and down. When it moves down, it increases the size of the chest cavity. When it moves up, it makes the chest cavity smaller. Why am I even talking about lungs if I'm gonna be talking about waist trainers, you may ask? I'm asking, <laughs> I wanna know, you wanna know. So it's, it's because you really can't train the waist, but what you're doing is you're displacing the fat that's in your abdomen. So here we are, if you look at this person here, their abdomen is here. These are where all the internal organs are. This is where your liver is and your spleen and all your intestines and everything's in here. Now, when you put a waist trainer on, it looks like this picture here. So what's happened is the waist trainer now gets applied and it squishes you. And when it squishes your body, what it's really doing is it's moving the contents of your abdomen up into your chest because this diaphragm here can move. Remember, that's how you breathe. It comes down when you bring air into your lungs and it goes up when you squeeze the air out of your lungs. So it can move. So what happens is when you wear the waist trainer, it cinches in your abdomen and your guts basically go into your chest and they limit the amount of of the amount of lung that can open up. So that's why I've asked Gabby to be here because I kind of want to demonstrate that phenomenon to you. Gabby doesn't have any internal fat. So you're gonna be the no internal fat person. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be the other person. I have a lot of internal fat. And I wanna show you what the difference is with our breathing and what happens when you're wearing a waist trainer. Okay, so now imagine that we put a, a waist trainer on Gabby. So what's gonna happen is, just go ahead and suck in your abdomen. Okay, there's not much change because she really doesn't have much internal fat. And when she's, she's holding her breath now, what's happened is those lungs have got a little bit smaller because what small internal fat she has kind of moves up. Now, you could probably stay like this for as long as you can hold your breath. It's not uncomfortable, right? right? Okay, so I have a lot of internal fat. So when I do the same thing, and I'm trying to hold everything in, it's more difficult for me to talk and do this because my diaphragm has moved up higher. Okay, if I could let my breath out. <laughs> Okay, my diaphragm has moved up higher because I have more internal fat to move and moving that internal fat up into my chest, what happens is my lung capacity goes down so I get short of breath. 
All right. Thank you very much, Gabby. You're welcome. Great job. Thank you so much. It worked so hard here. Keep up the low <laughs> internal fat. Thank you. And so that's what's happening with a waist trainer. You definitely 100% will get a smaller waist if you wear a waist trainer because you're squishing your, your fat and your internal organs up into your chest. But it's not really training it to be that way because as soon as you take the trainer off, Everything's just going to come back to where it was. This is not a permanent change. You can't just apply pressure to the body and then it stays that way. So it's kind of like when you squeeze a tube of toothpaste. But the difference is with a tube of toothpaste, when you squeeze it in the middle, the toothpaste goes to the top and the toothpaste goes to the bottom. But the toothpaste will actually stay there because the toothpaste tube is malleable and it, it'll, you can, it's metal, you can squeeze it. So this is kind of the same thing as your body. This is a fixed space. Now imagine that half of this is your chest and half of this is your abdomen. So if you put the waist trainer on, yeah, sure, I can squeeze this in, but the overall capacity of this has not changed. It's just the air inside here has been relocated. Now it comes down here, that's not, not possible in, in the, the human body really goes into the pelvis. So I don't want to get into that too much. But what happens is you're squeezing, you're getting a smaller waist because that air that's in here is going up into the chest. But as soon as you take that waist trainer off, it's the same because the capacity of the body is identical. It's not changing. Okay, let me use a skeleton as a, as a final way to try and, and bring this point home and explain it. So when you go... And this part is squeezable. You can push this in and out. This is from your sides. You can squeeze them. Your chest, you really can't squeeze. But where you can get space in the chest is when the diaphragm goes up and the lungs shrink down because you put the waist trainer on, you squeeze this here. And as you squeeze this here, the contents go up. Some of them go down, but most go up. And that gives you your effect of wearing a waist trainer. But as soon as you take the waist trainer off, diaphragm comes down, organs come out of the pelvis, and everything goes back to normal. You're not going to change your waist permanently by using a waist trainer. That's why I'm not a big fan of waist trainers, because I don't think they're doing anything that people really think they're doing. It's impossible to train the part of your body to get smaller by wearing something. Now, waist trainers, Fajas, they're excellent shapewear. So if you wanna wear them to look better in your clothes, by all means, wear them. And if you find your shapes like this and you want to have a shape like that, it's just simply losing weight to get rid of the internal fat. So I see people spending their time and money on a waist trainer when probably they're better off just to lose some of that internal fat. Uh, and that will give them a smaller waist. If you're looking for a waist trainer to give you a better shape, in my opinion, you're better off wearing a Faja because a Faja will give you the entire shape, right from your upper back all the way down through your waist, through your hips, and will lift your butt. So in my opinion, if you're looking for shapewear, go with a Faja because the waist trainer is not really giving you any benefit other than giving you that smaller waist while you're wearing it. The Faja will still give you a smaller waist while you're wearing it, but it'll give you a lot of other features. The other point that I don't like about waist trainers is patients will wear them after surgery over top of their Faja, trying to get a better result. And it doesn't work, and all it does is cause problems. We see ischemia from it, so patients will get burns from it because there's too much pressure cutting off the oxygen to an area of lipo where the oxygen is already having a harder time from the lipo and then you put on the waist trainer on top of the faja you have way too much pressure if you have any questions please by all means leave them i love questions i love comments i read them i go through them i use them to make other videos so please like subscribe turn your notifications on season four started there's going to be a lot more episodes coming you don't want to miss them i try to make this as highly educational as we can. I feel that in season one, two, and three of Behind the Mask, 
we've covered a lot of topics. I would say we've kind of gone over the basics. And so I wanna make BTM4 a little bit more sophisticated, a little bit more deeper talking about some of these educational issues. So if there's something that's kind of been always burning in your mind, like, oh, I wonder how this works, please ask me. I'm happy to make a video about it. The chances are if you have a question, it's just like when you're in high school, there's probably a lot of other people in the classroom that have the same question. They just don't feel like raising their hand. So please, Raise your hand, ask a question, I'm happy to answer it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Welcome to season four of BTM.